राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल भा गोपी जन बल यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन या मुनथीरा वनचारी जय राध माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल भिरीट बर गोपी जन बल भिरीट बर यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदन ब्रज जन रंजन या मुनथीरा वन चारी या मुनथीरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ह 
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नेताय गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नेताय गोर हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद गौर प्रेम आनंद Hare Krishna. We are very, very fortunate that he, we have His Holiness Bhakti Vik Vikni Vinayak Narsingh Swami Maharaj with us. So Maharaj was initiated by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada in 1971 in London, 51 years back. And the second year, Maharaj received his second initiation. The next year itself. I was preaching in many Asian countries like India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Thailand, and so many other places. So, Maharaj took sannyas in 1994 from His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. And because Maharaj was very strict since his early days, it was not a big change for his lifestyle. I heard from the devotee yesterday that Maharaj was here in 1978 and he was the temple president. So, very fortunate to have Maharaj with us again. So Maharaj is known for his chanting and he has inspired many, many devotees, countless souls who has, you know, from his, through his lectures and guidance. Maharaj truly walks his talks and he's been teaching in MI, in Mayapur Institute since his inception. Let's welcome His Holiness Bhakti Vikram Vinasim Narasimha Swami Maharaj by loudly chanting three times. Hare Krishna. 
हरे कृष्ण ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधीर नृष्टु वभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी We're reading Shrimad Bhagavatam canto 4 chapter number 14 entitled Maharaj Prithu Milks the Earth Planet this morning text number 4 Tan Atishtati Ya Samyag Upayan Purva Darshitam avara shradayo peta upayan vindate anjasa tan atishtati asamyan upayan purvadashitan अवराश्रदयोपेता उपेयन विंदते जन्नतिष्ठतीयसमयाग उपयन पूर्वदाशितन अवराश्रदयोपेता उपेयन विंदते जसाष्टातीयसमयाग उपयन पूर्वदाशिता अवराश्रदयोपेता उपेयन विंदते
Son, the, those atishtati follows ya anyone who samyak completely upayan principles purva formerly dashitan instructed avara inexperienced shraddhaya with faith upeta being situated upayan the fruits of activities vindate enjoys anjasa very easily translation one who follows the principles and instructions enjoyed by enjoined by the great sages of the past can utilize these instructions for practical purposes such a person can very easily enjoy life and pleasures please repeat one who follows the principles and in and instructions enjoined by the great sages of the past can utilize these instructions for practical purposes such a person can very easily enjoy life and pleasures purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shrila prabhupada the vedic principles mahajano yenagata sapanta urge us to follow in the footsteps of great liberated souls in this way we can receive benefit in both this life and the next and we can also improve our material life by following the principles laid down by great sages and saints of the past we can very easily understand the aim of all life the word avaraha meaning inexperienced is very significant in this verse every conditioned soul is inexperienced everyone is a bodha jata born a fool and rascal in democratic government at the present moment all kinds of fools and rascals are making decisions but what can they do what is the result of their legislation they enact something today just to whimsically repeal it tomorrow one political party utilizes a country for one purpose and the next moment another political party forms a different type of government and nullifies all the laws and regulations this process of chewing the chewed puna punas charvita charvananam will never make human society happy in order to make all human society happy and prosperous we should accept the standard methods given by liberated persons om magyana tamarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chatsur unmilitanyena tasmay shri gurave namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishna vibio namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda 
श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास दे घोर भक्त बिंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so we're reading about the past times of maharaj prithu maharaj prithu came after maharaj venu vena the kru venu venu he uh, greatly abused the earth planet and he stopped all the brahmanas from doing sacrifice and the situation became so bad that the brahmanas had to curse venu to die and then from his body they churned maharaj prithu so maharaj prithu he had the task to restore the sanctity on the earth planet and to establish the religious principles in the proper codes according to vedas but when maharaj prithu first came mother earth was not yielding any grains people would plant grains and nothing would grow mother earth would not allow anything to be produced from her soil so maharaj prithu became very angry at mother earth and he was threatening her that you better allow us to produce grains and to to we have to feed the people we have to develop the the country the world so mother earth became a little frightened and she's speaking now trying to pacify the mind of maharaj prithu because maharaj prithu is an in an angry mood and he's threatening mother earth you better yield or else <laughs> you know so mother bumi is you know, she's trying to pacify maharaj prithu and she's explaining to maharaj prithu here in the verse today that if we act according to the scriptures and follow the example of the saintly persons then there will be natural prosperity both materially and spiritually the vedic culture is meant like that that people are meant to prosper both materially and spiritually the brahmanas are meant to guide people to such a, in such a way that they will be happy and prosperous and at the same time successful in the path of self realization so we have to understand how to go about this the formula is given prabhupad quotes here maha jano yena gata sapanta the statement is taken from chaitanya charitamrita and chaitanya charitamrita took it from mahabharat there's a verse there in mahabharat tarko pratishta shrutayo vibina nasav rishir yashyam natam vibinam dharmasya tadvam nihitam gohayam mahajano yena gata sapanta very important verse often quoted by shrila prabhupad is very relevant that it's describing that dry arguments are inconclusive and studying the vedas is also not going to give the proper direction because there are many different contradictory statements within the scriptures and if we follow the great munis and rishis one rishi will come up with one philosophy and another rishi will defeat it and they will present a different philosophy and this goes on one after another prabhupad in his purport he talks about politicians that we elect one party into power and they have all their ideas what they're going to do but nothing really 
develops and then the people, people will elect another party and another party will come into power and change everything and they will put all of their ideas into action and still the country will be in difficulties one after another just si simply changing from one side of the fence to the other no political party has the real solutions to the problems of the world so great sages and thinkers they do not give the real truth so where is the truth to be found so dharmasya tatvam nihitam guhayam that we have to understand the absolute truth is hidden in the hearts of the pure devotees and one can understand the absolute truth by following in the footsteps of the great souls the mahajanas mahajanas are described by lord yamaraj in srimad bhagavatam the original mahajans swayambu narada shambu komar kapilomanu Pralado, Janako, Bhishmo, Balir, Vyasaki, Vayam. That Vayam, that is Lord Yamaraj himself. So the twelve Mahajans, they are the original authorities on devotional service. Of course, we have also the modern day Mahajans also. The modern day Mahajans means people like the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Baladeva Vijabhusan, Jiva Goswami, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. These are also Mahajans. They have also given us a lot of direction, a lot of instruction about what to do you know there's a, a famous book we used to read as children maybe you've heard of it it's a book by a person called uh, Ingen, Ingen, Ingen Blyton it's called Alice in Wonderland right did you read that book so in that book we read about Alice she goes into a wonderland and when she comes into the wonderland She's looking around and she's wondering, where do I go from here? Which way should I go? So they asked her, where do you want to go? And she said, well, I don't really know. So then they said, well, it doesn't matter which way you go, does it? <laughs> so foolish people are like that. Prabhupada in his purport talks, he said, most people in the world today condition souls we are inexperienced we're inexperienced we don't know really what to do which way to go we're we're thinking the solution to the problems of the world economic development let's develop the economy let's prosper just like I was here in Hyderabad in the 1970s, about 50 years ago. So can we say now Hyderabad is so different from 50 years ago? You know, I can see such, and this temple is completely different. I couldn't recognize it at all when I came here this morning. So can we say that are we happier because of all of these things? Does it make us happier? You know, I, this, this is the situation not only here, but all over the world. All over the world, we're thinking that economic development will solve the problems of the world. But economic development just simply creates more problems. It doesn't solve the problem. It simply creates more greed, more lust, more illusion. We have to understand what is actually necessary in the world today. 
what is the aim of life? People think the aim of life is to make money, to be rich. The rich people are the most unhappy people in the world today. They're not happy. They're miserable people. Some of the richest people end up committing suicide. They're so miserable. And just because we're rich, does it mean we're protected from the miseries of life? The problems of life are always there for everyone. Old age, disease, and death. For everyone. Bhagavad Gita says, Jatashya hi dhruvam mrityu dhruvam janma mritashya cha. For one who has taken birth, death is certain. So we all know we have to die, but who's ready to die? Who's preparing for that moment? We have to understand what is the real priority in human life. Having a lot of wealth is not going to save us from death, untimely death. Death comes when we're not, we're not expecting it. There's a story about one man who had a, somehow he had a talk with Lord Yamaraj. And he told Lord Yamaraj, I will agree to come with you, but you have to warn me before you take me away. Give me a warning. So Lord Yamara said, yes, we'll give you warning, okay. So after some time, it happened that this man died. So this man, then when he died, he said to Yamara, she said, why, why you did like that? You said you would give me warning before I would die. And Lord Yamara said, no, I warned you. The man said, no, you didn't. Lord Yamara said, yes, I did. Look, all your gray hair, all your wrinkles. That's a warning, right? When the hair goes gray and starts falling out and the face is all wrinkles, then you know death is coming very soon. You have to become very serious. We have to understand what is the priority in life. The big bank balance, the nice car, the credit cards, are they going to save us at the time of death? No. But if we have dedicated some time for the service of the Supreme Lord, if we have heard the message of the Mahajans, and if we have taken it seriously and tried to follow their example, then that is proper use of the human life. We have to hear the Mahajans, the message of the great saints, the authorities. They are guiding us. They are speaking to us what we need to hear. We need to hear about the futility of the material existence. This world is temporary place of misery. The illusion of happiness, however, is there in the conditioned soul. Conditioned souls, we make mistakes, we're subject to illusion, we have imperfect senses, and we have the tendency to cheat. And we cheat ourselves. We cheat ourselves into thinking, I'm happy, I'm enjoying life, I'm going to live here forever. Like the, we go on with all of these plans. We're making plans. But whatever plan man makes, Maya will destroy it. We are not supreme. We are tiny parts of the Supreme. We're the tiny parts, we're the Amshas, right? But Krishna, he is the, he is the Supreme Lord. Ekala, Ishwara Krishna, or Sabhritya. Lord Krishna is the Supreme 
controller, and all others are his servants. We have to understand what is our actual position in this world. We are not the master. We are not the enjoyer. That is the Supreme Lord. Our position is to serve. The meaning of religion, dharma. Srila Prabhupada used to explain to us this word dharma. He said, difficult to put exactly into English, but he would give example. He said, just like the dharma of sugar is sweet. If, it, if it's not sweet, it's not sugar. The sugar has to be very sweet. And similarly, he said, the dharma of chili, chili should be hot. If it's not hot, it's not really chili. In the same way, the living entity, the jiva, we also have the dharma. What is the, the characteristic of the living entity? The characteristic is servant, to serve. Everyone has to do service. We're all engaged in some kind of service. Father is serving his child. Wife is serving her husband. The politician is meant to be serving all of the members in his constituency. The prime minister is serving the country. Everyone is meant to be engaged in some type of service. But our service is being misdirected. We are meant to direct our service towards the Supreme Lord. But we have forgotten Krishna. Forgetting Krishna since time immemorial, right? We have had many, many births, many, many lives in this material world. We've forgotten Krishna for many lifetimes. Of course, we don't remember all of these births, but Lord Krishna does. He knows all of our births, and he's aware of it. He's watching us, and he's trying to help us. In the form of the super soul, he has expanded into our heart. The super soul is there in the heart to guide us, to direct us, to awaken us, to remind us, to give us knowledge how to properly act. But because we are conditioned souls, we don't hear Krishna speaking. Krishna's in the heart as the Paramatma. He's speaking to us, but we're not hearing. Therefore, Krishna comes again, and he comes in the form of Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru. And he's speaking through these things, through the, the spiritual teacher, through the saints, and through the scriptures. Lord Krishna is speaking to all of us, trying to awaken us. What is the proper standard for human society? How should we live? How should we act? Bhagavad Gita describes there are two natures. There is the divine nature and the demoniac nature. Daivi Sampat and Asuric Sampat. It's interesting to note there's only two natures. Sometimes people argue with me, they say, no, there should be three, why only two? <laughs> they want to, they think, well, I may not be, I may not be godly, but I'm not a demon. <laughs> but Krishna said, no, you are. If you're not godly, then you're a demon. <laughs> you're demoniac. Krishna says this. There's only two natures. No, no, no there should be something. In, I'm in between. <laughs> but no, cannot. Just like you come to the border. Either you're in India or you're in Pakistan. Right? You cross the border. You cannot say, I'm in between. 
I'm not in India, I'm not in, I'm in, in the border. So we are also Tatasta Shakti. Either we're in Maya or we're with Krishna. If we're not with Krishna, then we must be in Maya. It's very simple. And when we're in Maya, we don't know what is proper to be done. We don't know what, what is to be done and what is not to be done. Prabhupada would quote the verse, Pravritim cha nivritim cha jnana navadura suraha. Pravriti and nivriti. What to do and what is not, what's not to do. Devotees, for example, devotees, we make vows. No meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit connection with the opposite sex. And Prabhupada said, yes, no nonsense. Right? This is all the nonsense of the asuras, the materialistic people who are demoniac minded. They are thinking, I will enjoy. They will enjoy chicken birani. <laughs> They're not thinking the poor chicken. They're not thinking the karma. They're not thinking the results of their action. They're only thinking, my tongue will enjoy the taste. The tongue may enjoy the taste, it doesn't mean the stomach will enjoy. And certainly the heart will not enjoy. If our heart is very cold and hard, then we don't think about these things. We don't care about others. Krishna consciousness process is to make the heart soft, that we will be more caring and feeling for others. Just like Srila Prabhupada went to America and he told people there, I have not come to take, I have come to give. And similarly, Prabhupada came to Hyderabad. He said, I have come to give. To give what we have forgotten. What have we forgotten? Simply Krishna. That Krishna is the Supreme Lord and we are his tiny, tiny servants. Remembrance of this fact will save us from the danger of material life. The danger is, now we have the human body, but if in the next life we become a dog, it is not very good. And Prabhupada would say, now here in India we see everyone's on four wheels, or two wheels, <laughs> right? motorbikes as well, many motorbikes here. And four wheels, he said, dog is on four wheels. Dog also has four wheels. What is the business of the dog? Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. And people are running on their four wheels, the same dog mentality. Where is food? Where is sleep? The same business. So we have become two-legged animals. Human life is not meant for living like animals. Human life is meant for thoughtfulness. Vedanta Sutra begins, Atato Brahma Jignasa. That now you're, now, why, why does it begin now? Why did Srila Vyasadeva begin Vedanta Sutra with Atato? That now you're a human being. Try to understand the value of human life. That it is not meant for just simply sense gratification. That senses will never be satisfied. Lust is never satisfied. It burns like fire and is never satisfied. The more fuel you put on the fire, the bigger the fire grows. In the same way, that desire to enjoy and to exploit the resources of the material world just simply increases more and more. The more we serve the senses. Therefore, 
Spiritual practice involves training the mind and senses to develop control over them, to control what we eat and what we do, to control our actions and thoughts. And proper control means to utilize them in the service of the Supreme Lord. And if we don't take that opportunity, which is given to the human being, then next life we don't get a human body because you didn't need a human body. If you live like animals, next life you get the animal body because you didn't use the human body for its real purpose. Animals don't have religion. Religion is only in human society. And we have to understand what is real religion. So this Srimad Bhagavatam is propounding the highest truth. It rejects all religion which are materially motivated. Kaitava Dharma, simply cheating religion. You may say, we have so many temples here in Hyderabad. We are very religious people. We have many, but what is the business when we go to temple? Simply we pray to God, give me. We come with a list. I need this. I have my daughter to get married. Oh, we've been married five years. We have no child yet. Give us a child. You know, we go to God with a big list of all our demands. That is not religion. That is Kaitava Dharma. That is the cheating religion. You go to God with all of these things. He hears you, but he doesn't take it very seriously. Many people go with these things all day. He's hearing every day people. Give me this. I need that. Help me. Oh. You could understand. How would you feel as a father? If your daughter comes to you every day, oh, Baba, I need this, I need no, Baba, give me a new handphone, oh, Baba, give me, <laughs> you know, so many. How will you feel? You, oh, you know, you, you want, you get tired of it, right? So just imagine how Krishna feels every day. People are coming with their requests, what they need. But if you go to Krishna and ask him, please engage me in your service. That is what to ask him. How can I serve you? That is what that is the prayer of the devotee. Lord Chaitanya teaches us, I nadanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmanishware bhavatad bhakti rahaitakitva. I don't want wealth or followers or so much praise. I simply want your devotional service, birth after birth. The devotee doesn't even pray for liberation. He simply asks, please engage me in your service. Give me the chance to serve you. And that is the meaning of our Hare Krishna mantra. O Supreme Lord Krishna, O Supreme Energy of the Lord Hari, please engage me in, in your service. And if we can do even a little service for, for the Lord in the course of this lifetime, it saves us from the greatest danger. The danger being we lose this human form of life. So we have to be very careful, very conscious of our responsibility. We are given facilities, and with facility comes responsibility. And just like you're given nice facility here, beautiful temple, beautiful deities, everything very nice. It's a great responsibility to keep the purity and to distribute the message of Krishna more and more widely to give everyone the chance to hear about Srila Prabhupada and this mission of Krishna consciousness and how it's being distributed all over the world. 
that what is going on here today is not unique. It's going on all over the world. All over the world, people are frustrated and disappointed in their efforts to find happiness and to achieve the goal of life. And therefore, they're coming to Krishna consciousness. Not only in India, in America, in China, in Russia, in Africa, everywhere people are taking to Krishna consciousness. Devotees of Krishna are everywhere. They're just waiting for us to come there and find them. So devotees are utilizing this human life. We try to utilize our time in this way to keep ourselves active, preaching and trying to distribute, trying to give this message of Krishna. Consciousness of Krishna is in the heart of everyone. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has written in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Shadya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chite Karehi Udai Krishna Prem, it's there in our heart, but it has to be awakened by hearing. And who, who's going to give people the opportunity to hear? Well, the Mahajans, the saints, the Mahajans, they're speaking. And we should also try to repeat what we have heard. Just like we hear Prabhupada's lectures, and we hear every, every temple, you know, you can play and we can read Prabhupada's books. So we're hearing Prabhupada, his words. We should repeat. We should tell others. Just like Prabhupada was told by his spiritual master that whatever you know, you go and teach it to others. Distribute it. You don't have to know very much, but whatever you know, you have to use it. If you don't use it, it will simply dry up. We give the example. You know how in the, in the 50 years ago or more in India, we kept water in clay pots. We had these earthen pots. We didn't have refrigerators, so common, but we had these nice clay pots, earthen pots. And you keep the water in the clay pot, and the result is the water becomes cool. It's not hot. You can put the boiled water even into the clay pot and the water will cool very nicely and you can drink it and it's refreshing. You put the water in the fridge, it comes out freezing. It's horrible, very unhealthy. But you had the clay pots, you put the water there, you can drink the water from the clay pot. The old system was much better than today. But the problem with the clay pot, the clay pot is porous and the water evaporates. So you have to keep filling it up. You have to keep adding water in. So the same way, knowledge is like that. That if you don't use it, it dries up. It evaporates. You forget. Just like sometimes we... We try to learn something, we learn a verse from the Bhagavad Gita, but we don't use it. And then, oh, what was that verse? Oh, what did he say? You know, we forget. Eh? That's the nature of the mind. It's restless and unstable, very easy for us to forget. And we forget, the ten we forget sometimes the most important things. We need to remember. And that's why we come to temple. That's why we come to see the deities. You should come every day, come and see the deities, and come and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And in this way, you start to remember. Remember, I am not the body. I am not God. I am a tiny part of the Supreme Lord. And I am meant to be his servant. So this is a message from the Mahajans. We do like that, we will be happy. You will see how your life changes, how you can actually be happy. 
even without economic development, we can be happy and satisfied in this world if we have consciousness of Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you for the nice class, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, I have a couple of questions. The one thing you mentioned about people going with the list to the Lord, maybe they say they have. Hold the mic to your mouth. Hare Krishna. Okay. So, so you mentioned about people going to the Lord with a list of demands. I, I want this, I want that. I, I'm still, I didn't catch it. People who? List. Oh, a list of demands. List of demands. Okay. Uh, when someone is sick, when someone is ill, we, we go and pray to the Lord, you know, please cure him, please help him. So, so is that also in, in list of demands? Well, when Prabhupada was sick, Prabhupada gave us a prayer because we wanted to pray also for Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada gave us a prayer. He said, you can pray. Dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, please save Srila Prabhupada. So we have to understand that Krishna is a controller. So it's not to be, you, you have to save him. <laughs> you know, you, if you, no, you have to save him. I need him. You have to, you, you, we have to understand Krishna is a controller. So if Krishna desires, then save him. So Prabhupada taught us to pray like that. Dear Lord Krishna, if you so desire, then Please do this for me. Thank you, Maharaj. Huh? Not different. Yeah. We have to understand Krishna's in charge. So we can put requests to Krishna. Man proposes, God disposes. So it's up to Krishna. It's not up to us. Right? So we have to understand. And Krishna knows. Krishna knows the difficulty, he knows all these situations, he knows what the problem is. You think, are you, you have to go and remind him? Mm. Krishna doesn't need reminded. He's well aware of everything. He's in everyone's heart and he knows each and everything about everyone. What we need to do is to remember that he's the controller and take shelter and surrender to him. What is your desire, Krishna? Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, I have another question, Maharaj. Uh, we learn, you know, I am not this body, I am this soul, and, and Bhagavad Gita, and all this philosophy. But when it comes to personal application, like a close family member is ill, and, and uh, nearing death, then it still affects at least me. So, what is the solution or what is the way out, Maharaj? Yes, naturally, of course, we have affection for our family. One man asked Prabhupada about Arjuna because Krishna had spoken the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And then Arjuna went out in the battle of Kurukshetra, and in the course of battle of Kurukshetra, Abhimanu was killed. So Abhimanu was a very dear son of Arjuna, and he was killed. So was, Krish, was Arjuna affected? Yes, of course, all the Pandavas lamented the death of Arjuna. But the next day he went out and fought. The next day he went out and got revenge for the death of Abhimanu. He didn't just sit back and lament for days and days and do nothing. No, the next day he was out there. He didn't give up the duty. So, yes, naturally lamentation will be there for some, you know, we feel disturbed, we lose someone near and dear. But we don't give up our duty, service to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mara. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Pranam Maharaj. Uh, Krishna is uh, online with every living being, no Prabhuji. 
Krishna is online with every living being. So when we are going on serving, it is enough, no, if we, Maharaj, if we need not ask actually. He knows what we require. He, Krishna knows what we, what every living being requires. Mm -hmm. So if we are going on serving him, he will give what is required for us. He, is it any require, need for asking him something? An infant is not asking anything from parents. So we are like infant, infants in front of Krishna. So we, we go, if we go on, whatever is possible for us, if we are serving Krishna, he will give what is required, no problem, Maharaj. Is it correct? Any correction? Definitely. Is it's correct. We have to understand Krishna is in charge. So if we require something, if Krishna thinks it's necessary, Krishna will give it. Hmm? But at the same time, we endeavor. Sometimes Krishna likes to see us endeavor. It's not that just because we, it's required, Krishna will immediately give us. It may take some time. Just like Prabhupada was trying to distribute Krishna consciousness, right? He was in Jansi and he was trying to do something in Jansi, but then somehow it didn't work out. And then somehow he got the chance to go to USA. So he thought, let me try. Lord Nityananda wanted to deliver Jagai and Madhai. And at the first attempt, he failed. They had to run. Haridas and Lord Nityananda, they had to run because Jagai and Madhai were intoxicated and they chased them when Lord Nityananda had come requesting them to chant the holy name. They were attacked and they had to run. But he didn't give up. He came back. And similarly, Prabhupada was trying to distribute Krishna consciousness. He began back to Godhead 1944. He first printed back to Godhead. And so he was writing articles before that. 1944, he began back to Godhead. It was 1966 before he got to America and could do something. So he was endeavoring. So many, 22 years, he was endeavoring, he kept trying. You don't always get success. But, just like they wanted to, the, when uh, Maharaj Sagar's children were, the sons of Maharaj Sagar were all burned to ashes because of their offense against Lord Kapila. So the only way the sons of Maharaj Sagar could be delivered was to bring Ganga down to earth. So it didn't immediately happen, right? The Am Amsuman first tried, he couldn't do it, and then his son, and then his son, next son. It took it before, it was several generations before Bhagirat came, and Bhagirat Maharaj, he was somehow able to bring Ganga down to earth. So we have to understand that things don't always happen immediately. You have to be determined and patient and enthusiastic. Endeavoring how best to serve. Endeavoring how best to serve Krishna. En endeavoring. Endeavoring how best to How best to serve to Krishna. Krishna. Yes. Right, that endeavor to serve Krishna. Yes. Definitely we have to be constantly thinking how can I do more? That should be the mood. Prabhupada says in the Upadesha Amrita that these three things, enthusiasm, patience, and determination, are required in everything, in every endeavor you have, material or spiritual. There has to be that. And you know, you're going to start a business, or you've got a new job, or you get married, or some, some kind of change. You have to be enthusiastic, you have to be patient, you have to be determined. You know, these things are there in every endeavor. So it's a process. Yes, Ravi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. You mentioned that we have to think Krishna at every moment. 
um, but how, how can we get to that state? Is it possible and how can we get to that state? Because when I'm driving a two-wheeler, I'm looking at the road, things like that. And when you're driving what? I mean, when, when we're driving on the road and then we are concentrating on the road. So at oh, every yeah. moment, we have to think of Krishna. Yes. Kindly help us how we can get to that state. Well, your driving should be for the service of Krishna. If you're driving for the service of Krishna, that is thinking of Krishna. Just like when you're cooking, you have to cook. You have to think about what you're cooking. You don't just think of Krishna, but you think of how to serve Krishna. What, what is your service to Krishna? So you're driving, it should be for Krishna. It shouldn't be driving for sense gratification. You're not driving just to go and do some sinful activity. But you're driving, maybe you have a job and you're, you're working and you think that work is my service to Krishna. Of course, you have to work in material world, you have a job. We have to, but that is service to Krishna. Krishna doesn't encourage Arjuna, don't do anything. He tells Arjuna, fight. But first of all, fix your mind on me and fight. So first thing is to fix the mind on Krishna and then go into battle. So when Arjuna's in battle, he's not just only thinking of Krishna, but he's thinking how to fight. He's got to think, what is the astra? What is the right weapon to counteract their weapon? He, has, he, has, he certainly is thinking about how to fight. But the first thing, fix the mind on Krishna. The, in the beginning, right? Maharaj Ambarish. In the very beginning, he fixes his mind on Krishna. And then he got, does so many other services for Krishna. So first, get the first thing right. That I'm doing it for Krishna. Pick, fix the mind on Krishna. That this is my service to Krishna. And I'm going to serve Krishna. And if we have that kind of consciousness, then that is Krishna's service. Yeah, you're driving. You have to be very careful to watch the road. But... You have to do it for, you're doing it for Krishna. You're not doing it just for sense gratification. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dharat Pranam. Thank you for this wonderful class. So I, I would like to add on to what Prabhu just uh, quoted. Just. So uh, being in this conditioned state, it's just so uh, difficult. So we just, we, we have to put a leash on our mind and senses. It's not like that we have uh, aced in serving or like that. But we do have to put some leash on mind and senses so as to prevent from going down the path of degradation. So it seems that uh, we are in a constant battle. Uh, we are fighting it constantly. Like, and I wonder like when it's going to get over, when it's going to take break. And when I do that, and that's the time when I feel uh, that I'm most vulnerable to these uh, temptations or uh, whatnot. So what? Uh, so my question is like, how do we stay on it? Like, how do we develop this endurance to stay on this path? Like, uh, yeah. How to? Like how, how do we fight? develop this endurance to stay on that path? Uh, that's how to fight Maya. No, 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 no. On the path. Yeah, like we uh, we have to like constrain our mind and senses uh, being in the conditioned state as of now. We are not in that elevated position so that you know we uh, can you, you know we have that taste for it, serving Krishna uh -huh. as you were mentioning just a while ago. Yes. So, it seems like it's very difficult to, you know, um, uh, fight against this temptations and all this. We have to be very vigilant and we have to uh, endure constantly. And it's a constant battle. And we wonder, like, what, what, what should we do? Like, when will it going to get over? And it seems that it, there is need of this endurance, like constant battle we have to fight through. So what, how can we develop this endurance? That's what I'm asking. Maharaj. Well, just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna was describing yoga to Arjuna and Arjuna was saying, 
very difficult to control the mind because the mind is so restless and turbulent, more difficult to control my mind than to control the wind. But Lord Krishna said, well, I know it's difficult, but it's possible. And he said, two things are required, constant practice and detachment. So you have to, we have to, if we want to make some progress, we have to constantly practice. We have to practice trying to remember Krishna. The mind wanders away from Krishna, bring it back. We don't leave it to enjoy, think about, contemplate the material world. We bring it back to Krishna and see everything in relation to Krishna. One devotee was describing Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srila Prabhupada had been watching devotees put on a drama and they were putting on a drama about the age of Kali. And Prabhupada was there watching it. And they had, at one point, they had a young woman come on. Because, you know, beautiful young women, they attract the mind of all the men. So this beautiful young woman, one of the devotee ladies, she came on and she was like showing how age of Kali, people are very inclined to the opposite sex and the, the desire for illicit connection, very strong. So the young woman came on there looking very attractive. And all the, the young men, the sannyasis particularly, they, all, they looked down, you know. <laughs> they didn't want to look at the beautiful young woman. But afterwards, Prabhupada explained to them, he said, he said a, a devotee will learn to see that the beauty of the material world, such as manifested in the form of the young woman, that this is a creation of Krishna. That is Krishna's creation. He doesn't think that, oh, I will enjoy, but he understands, oh, this is Krishna's creation. Krishna has created so many wonderful things, everything. So that we have to train our mind to see everything in relation to Krishna. And so in that way, gradually, we can detach ourselves from the thought of sense gratification. If we're thinking, I want to enjoy, that's not right. But if we understand that it's Krishna's property, Krishna's the enjoyer, we have to train the mind at how to think in the proper way. So that's why it's so important for us to hear. We have to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. We have to hear this teaching of Krishna consciousness. And gradually we start to remember. It, remember, I said we've been in the material world a long time. So we're very conditioned. And our conditioning has covered us for many years, many lifetimes. We've been covered by the material energy. It's going to take time to get rid of that covering. It's not just chant Hare Krishna one time and finished. You, know, you have to practice. We have to practice remembering Krishna, bringing the mind back to Krishna. And you have to hear this knowledge to train the mind how to see the world, how to see everything in relation to Krishna that it's Krishna's creation. He created all of these wonderful things. So we can use them in Krishna's service or you can use them for service of Maya. We have to be intelligent to understand, use everything properly for the service of Krishna, not for the service of Maya. Maya will mean bondage in material life. Again, birth and death. We will stay in the material world. We'll become more covered. But if you use everything for Krishna, then you can get free. You can go back to Godhead. So constant practice and detachment. We have to let go. Don't hold on. Hold on to Krishna, right? Don't hold on thinking it's mine. Hold on to Krishna. I am Krishna's. I am Krishna's. 
I am his servant. So that should be the mode. Thank you very much. Huh? For Krishna, everything for Krishna. Yes, it's all by, it's all Krishna's, and it's for, it's for his pleasure. Okay. Yes, one more question. This man had his, his anxious. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Dandavatma, ma'am. I would like to know this Krishna consciousness and Supreme Lord is Krishna. And the, we are all fate-driven people. We believe fate. Fate, fate means that uh, destiny. Whatever decisions we have been taking, are they destiny-based? Because we take good decisions, bad decisions, all this is based on the time, place and uh, circumstance. These decisions are being taken to meet our destiny. That is one point. Um, Are these decisions being taken to meet our destiny? Well, we have to understand how to make decisions. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna had to make a decision. Should he fight or not? So how did Arjuna make his decision? You can read. Karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichami tvam dharma samudachi. Arjuna said, I'm confused about my duty because of my miserly weakness. So we all have our destiny. We have some destiny. But you have also choice. If you surrender to Krishna and become the disciple of Krishna and hear from Krishna, Krishna will guide you. So Arjuna was confused. But so he said, Shiksha steham sadi mam tvam prapanam. I am your disciple, a soul. Please instruct me. So we have to make a decision, take instruction. Mahajano yena gatasa. Follow the Mahajans. Don't just make the decisions listening to our own mind, but follow the, uh, the spiritual authorities. Be guided by people who are qualified to instruct us, to direct us. Sadhu, Shastra, Guru. That will save us from destiny. Yeah, you have one destiny is in the material world, but you can also get out of the material world. We have free will. We do have independence. Your independence is to choose Krishna or Maya. You choose Maya, then your destiny is there, under the control of Maya, the three modes of nature. That should, but if you choose Krishna, then you have a different destiny. You're under the control of Krishna. That is the free will we have. Make proper use of our free will, and you can get the best destiny. But in Iskan, we are uh, worshipping Krishna as the supreme. But in all other people, they consider some people or some demigods are they are only the supremes for them. For them. And is it a destiny or how to bring them to Krishna consciousness by teaching that Krishna is high because many people will not uh, uh, consider that Krishna is a lot because many other uh, things are there. Suppose if I give some uh, job to some person, I may be a god to him. Well, and, they have to understand that the results of their worship is limited and temporary. Antavattu palam desham bhavati aupa medesham. Antavattu palam desham, the fruit of the worship of the demigods will be limited and temporary. Therefore, they should, but the worship of the demigods is in the Vedas. So it's a Vedic path. And the point of the, being in the Vedas is, is that people should eventually understand that the result of their worship is very temporary. They're not getting the ultimate benefit. And that's how we bring them to Krishna consciousness, by explaining to them that they're only getting limited and temporary benefit. 
And then they will, if they're intelligent enough, they will understand they have to come to Krishna. So the, it's in the Vedas, worship demigods, and the idea is that they will c gradually come to understand that they're not getting the ultimate goal of life. They're missing the real, the real purpose. So then they come to Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Manande. Hare Krishna. So we'd like to thank Maharaj for giving such a wonderful message. How we can be really happy by following the instructions of Mahajan. We cannot be happy just by economic development. The real happiness is by practicing Krishna consciousness. And Maharaj told us that not only you have to practice, we have to preach also. And then we can always remember it. So let us thank Maharaj by chanting one time Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. His Holiness Bhakti Vignivinasa Nursing Swami Maharaj Ki Jai, Sheila Prabhupada Ki Jai.